Welcome to the time value of money part two. We're going to start by uh, following up on the last presentation, part one. I recommend you look at it if you haven't seen it. And then we're going to do present value and then uh, deal with multiple cash flows. So the future value, we had the equation. You may notice I've changed uh, the t to an n, but the future value at a given point in time is equal to the present value times 1 plus the rate to the power of n being the number of periods. So we used the equation with the, with the values of present value of 100, the rate being 10% a year, and the period being one year. So that gave us a future value of 100 times 1.1, or 110. That's the timeline uh, view where you see uh, the arrows pointing up and down representing the direction of cash flow. So in essence you have cash going out so you could also consider it as a minus 100 um, but basically 100 cash going out that you're lending to me and after one year you're receiving 110. Now taking more n being one, it can also be many more than one period. So future value at any given point in time n is present value times one plus r to the power of n. So we looked at 100 with 10% and now t or n being three years. So the future value at three was equal to 100 times one plus 0.1, so 1.1 to the power of three. So that was equal to 133.1. So that, again, is a depiction where the 100 is going out, and after three years, you get 133 coming in. Those two arrows are equal and opposite in value. In other words, the 133 in three years is worth the one equal to 100 today. Now, the present value is just turning around that question. So how much would you be willing to pay me if I say, I'll pay you $110 in a year, and you want or you need a return of 10%. Well, we know already that the future value of $100 at 10% is 110. So clearly the present value of that 110 would be $100. Okay. That is just taking uh, the equation, the future value, and turning it around. So if I take the future value equation, future value is present value times 1 plus r. I divide both sides by 1 plus r. And then I have the present value is equal to the future value divided by 1 plus r. Now, using the same reasoning, we can look at the general form of the equation, which would be future value is present value times 1 plus r to the power of n. I divide both of these sides by 1 plus r to the n. That disappears on the right. And then here, you'll have future value over 1 plus r to the n. So turning it around so I have present value, Present value equals future value divided by 1 plus r to the power of n. If we use the following values, with the future value being 133.1, r again being 10% a year, and t, or n actually, I should say, is 3 years, I come up with the result that present value is 133 over 1.1 cubed, which is $100. We know that already from look, calculating the future value of $100 over three years. So we, you should be familiar with the, ex, with the value. There. If I have multiple cash flows, the question is, how do I deal with it? Well, let's get into the scenario. If I promise to pay you $110 in one year, and then also, in addition, $133, 133.1 in three years, how much is that worth? for you, assuming you need a 10% return. Well, that's the visual depiction of it. So in one year, you would receive 110. In three years, you would receive 133.1. Well, hopefully, you can see that this is simply worth each of those separately added up. In other words, the first payment, 110 in one year is worth 100, and 133 years, uh, 33.1 in, in three years is also worth 100. So that should be worth $200 to you. And if I look at it with multiple years, going here I'm showing t, it could be any number of periods. It can go up actually theoretically into infinity. All I would be able to have to do is say, what's the calculation 
for each, what's the present value for each of these cash flows, and then add them up. As you can see, what I'm trying to do visually here is the dark blue uh, arrows are supposed to represent the present value for each of those cash flows. So now adding them up, piling them out on top of each other, the, um, the, that should represent the value of what all of those cash flows are worth together. So the general form you would see as present value is a sum. Again, we have our tipped over M, which is actually the Greek letter sigma, the sum from one to T or however many periods you have of the future value of the, so in other words, the cash flow you're going to get at this person point of time divided by one plus R to the power of N. Hopefully that helped and uh, all the best in making your calculations. Thank you for your attention.